Hey y'all, welcome to the Optimism Millionaire YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about how I look for changes in market trends so I can exploit those big volatile moves, especially to the downside. Uh, when the market shifts from a strong bullish trend into a large downtrend, usually it's very volatile, very quick, and a good point to make a lot of money very quickly. If you look at this chart here, going back to October, November 2023, we've had a very, very strong uptrend. About nine months of continuous bullish flow. But of course, in all of that buying, there are instances of some decent selling. In this case, we've had two major instances of great selling. One in April and another one now in July. Of course, we had a little bit there in January, but pretty small stuff. I'm talking about the big moves. The big move here in April and again, the big move here in July. Now, in both instances, I was able to take a put right before the markets began to roll over. And I want to show you exactly what I was looking for to get into those trades so you can look for a reversal and trend yourself. So go ahead and get it started here. The first move began in the last week of March. Now, if you don't already know, I am a VPA trader, which is volume price analysis centered around the teachings of Anna Colling and highlighted in this book, The Complete Guide to Volume Price Analysis. Also, if you'd like to know more, I'd highly encourage you to go take a look at this interview with the author, Anna Colling. Fantastic interview, well worth your time. So when I'm looking for a trend reversal, in this case to the downside, the first thing I'm looking for is any kind of influx of volume up and into the event that I think we're going to pivot to the downside. We got our first instance of high volume selling here on March 8th. Now, March 8th, if you go back and look, this is the first time we had that amount of selling since October 2023, roughly six to seven months. So I knew we would probably enter into some sort of supply, and that is the key. Price action seeks out liquidity. Everything goes from demand into supply and from supply back down into demand. So my job as a trader looking to take a downside position is to ensure that we have hit macro supply on the chart or where the institutional sellers are setting. So with that amount of volume, I knew we were getting close to the prospect of some sort of supply, but I did not have the confirmation yet. And what this high volume tells me is that this is stopping volume. This is a large enough amount of volume to kind of slow down the uptrend and put us into a consolidation phase, which I call distribution. Distribution is the phase where large players or large institutions are getting to offload their inventory, shift the market lower to regather more shares at a lower price or a discounted price. Now, a couple of weeks after this volume hits, we finally do enter the consolidation phase, that which is on March 20th, and we stay in that consolidation for a couple of weeks. Now, once I do notice that we are entering into consolidation, the first thing I want to do is note the range of that consolidation, which is approximately 53.99 and 53.28. Once I note that we're in a consolidation phase, the second thing I'm looking for is what's called a selling climax. A selling climax looks like this on this graphic. It's at the tail end of a consolidation, or in this case, distribution phase, and it's noted by another influx of volume followed by an aggressive move to the downside to break us out of the consolidation range to the downside. And a little note as well, if you are looking for a change in direction to the downside, it'll be highlighted by aggressive morning buy-ups and then afternoon rollovers, taking out new lows of the day. Conversely, if you're looking for a trend change back to the upside after a significant selling pressure, you're going to see a lot of V recoveries into the afternoon. Morning bearishness, a lot of aggressive selling, and then constant afternoon V recoveries. Once you see that start to happen over and over, most likely we're getting ready to have a change in direction to the upside and it's time to go long and or close out any short positions. Anyway, once I saw this large selling climax candle with the increase in volume outside of this relative range, I knew it was time to start taking some downside positions. So on May 5th, 2024, I entered into this position here, a May 17th SPX 5000 put. So I could ride this position for a couple of weeks, expecting a couple of weeks of at least of downside action. Now you might ask yourself, if I was so confident on downside, why didn't I take a more aggressive position, like a 1 DTE or a, even a 3 DTE position? Why did I take a 6 week DTE position? Well, that's because my own personal strategy. What I like to do with my account size and my knowledge and options writing is that as the position starts to go lower, instead of really closing out the position, what I prefer to do is to sell puts against this position, thus getting into some sort of calendar type spread. So as the market drops back over and the deltas on my premiums start to increase, I like to sell puts against this to lock in some premium, lower my cost basis, and transfer the theta burden onto my short positions rather than my long positions. And in other words, it just allows me to be less right. The demand for me to be so correct is lifted when I start to write premium and collect it on the way down instead of just long puts. So I ride long puts all the way down, and the deeper we go, instead of closing out the long puts, I'll simply short puts against the position. The real confirmation on downward trend for holding of the position would be the follow through candle on April 15th. So I held this position from April 5th here for the retest into support, failure of support, and then the sellers really kicked on on April 10th and brought this market down aggressively. Where I start to build my confidence big time in a position like this is this block of volume right here. Being a volume price analysis trader, price action is confirmed by volume. The price action looks great, 
but I have to have the volume here to gain confidence. And we had both aggressive top wicks, engulfing red candles to break through support, and massive volume. All key components to this is a qualified VPA downside move that allows me to hold my positions down for a 300 point sell off. Now going into the second move here, this was the move that most recently happened here in July. Now this one brings in a couple of different variables here. We had a quick breach that quickly exhausted. You see this exhaustion pattern here where the top wicks begin to grow a little bit more aggressively. Small top wick, small top wick, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, larger top wick. I wasn't ready to go short on this yet, but there was signs of buyer's exhaustion after sellers started to hit here in June, just like the prior pattern. Now the anomaly candle here on July 10th is what led me to believe that this was in fact the beginning of a selling climax. There wasn't a lot of confirmation there yet, but there were a couple of other things that were tipping me off that it was time that the sellers were going to get ready to hit and buyers were going to be taking profit. The first one was I knew that seasonality was coming. We're coming up on mid-July, end of July, and the July time frame into the late August, early September is when usually we have a lot of oscillations on volatility. And that is when VIX begins to oscillate from the 18 back down to the 20 back down and ultimately spike into the mid to upper 20s usually around this time frame. Number two was the anomaly on the VIX. Now, if you haven't already, I just released a video on the VIX that talks about that the market doesn't always go inverse to the VIX. There are times when the VIX goes up alongside the S&P, and that's when you want to pay attention for a possible movement in price. And that's exactly what happened on July 10th. When we had that big green candle on ES, I also noted that VIX was also climbing alongside the S&P, and not just by a small amount. It had gone from 1240 up to 1293, which is not a immaterial move. So the fact that the VIX was coming alongside the S&P was telling me that dealers were putting on hedge positions for some protection on their portfolios. That's all the VIX is. It's just an interpretation of the large institutions hedging their portfolio by placing downside protection. Because of all that, and because I thought that this was the beginning of a selling climax here with this anomaly, I went ahead at the top of this candle placed this position here. SPX, September 20th, 5350 puts. So now my intent for this trade was is to watch for the signs of distribution to ensure that we are going to enter the markdown phase. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the markdown or markup phase, take a look at this graphic. The market works in four basic cycles, accumulation into markup into distribution back into markdown over and over and over again. And what I'm looking for here is the selling climax to get us out of the distribution down into the markdown phase. You see here the weakness builds. We now have the selling climax on the up thrust followed by the aggressive downside, and now the constant wicks off prior supply. That aggressive bought top wick off of here to get the engulfing red tells us that we now have an egregious amount of supply sitting right here. The imbalance at 5707 created a massive amount of supply that rejects one, two, three times. On the third time, after the initial selling climax, we finally enter the markdown phase to take out the prior support and drop the market from 5720 to 5544. My first target for this move was the first base of market structure which is right here in the 5540 area, with the overall target down into the 5400s if this were to break. Reason why I thought the mid 5400s is because I thought that the market, if it were to break the structure, would have a good qualified support resistance test right here. What is a support resistance test? It is where the market puts in a resistance, a resistance, and then breaks above it, and then any time it does retreat, it uses that prior resistance as now as support which usually leads to a very aggressive buy up off this level, at least for the first attempt. So once we took out this market structure, the mid 5400s was gonna be my next target, and that is to be determined. And another way I visualize this market structure here, the 5500s, is through the volume profile. You'll see if you look back that all of these POCs in the four hour chart are centered smack dab in the middle of the 5530 range. So I know there's a ton of market support and market structure sitting in this area. Capturing a trend trained is a fantastic way to really hone your skills as a trader because you have to look at all the signs of the market between VPA, your system, down to market awareness, and then option structure of the market to determine when the market is going to shift on you. Going into the fall here, I do expect a lot more volatility. One, because of seasonality. Two, because we have a lot of crazy volatile events that are on the docket out there. So make sure you pay attention and don't get lazy because this market is about to test your skills in the next 60 to 90 days. We have a contested election. We have rate cut cycle shift plus seasonality. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this or any other content I have out there. You can hit me up at optionsmillionaire2020 at gmail.com or, of course, come over and join the Discord where we talk about this stuff every day, all day, so we can collectively become better traders. Thanks for hanging out on the Options Millionaire YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm out. See ya!